what's up YouTube? So a lot of people asked me how can you actually play the Kinetic Blast Magic Find character and what's exactly the budget of the build? So I kind of wanted to answer this question and also we're going to be looking at one of the most life-changing websites in PoE and how you can actually use it to make your mapping experience a lot better and it definitely changed my life. I feel a lot better after using it. Sounds like some testimonial but it is true. So right here we have the wand. This is called Doom Charm Imbued Wand. It's roughly 630 DPS. And right here we have Moon Sorrow, a one Chaos Wand I bought. So you can see here the damage 32,850 and 81,000. So it's kind of a big change, but does it actually matter? So we are trying out 80% Delhi map. I don't really want to do 100% Delhi because I feel like it could be a little bit too hard, but 80% Delhi should be good enough. So let's hope that I don't just die and make a fool out of myself because it's very possible. So tree, nothing's really changed that much. I did have to take some strength and int nodes because I had strength and int crafted on my wand. Now, ooh, it's taking a while to load. Now we go here and now we kind of want to start standing farther away and look, we can get some head on our buffs. Now, the name of the game is to get the head on our buffs and we have no head on our buffs so we are screwed. Finally got two, and this is with a Moon Sorrow, everyone. 80% Delhi. So you want to ask, like, what exactly is good about this build? This is a Moon Sorrow, right? Yeah, it's a Moon Sorrow, and now we can even swap in the item rarity gem in over here it's instead of Trinity, and we are good to go. So you say do you actually need the mirror wand? Save your money. Don't mirror any wand, right? Just buy better magic fun gear. But that's what's going to make you the money. And you could probably do this on 100% Delhi. This is a Moon Sorrow imbued wand again, everyone. Now, should I actually clear the map or should we move on to the rest of the video? Let's at least go find the boss, right? Because I can actually show you something with the boss. But someone actually showed me the stairs actually count as your higher terrain. So you can shotgun the boss. So you can see here, boss immediately dead. 41 buffs. Now, generally I like to pop the Sentinel. You can choose to pop the Sentinel in the Alva Temple or wherever you might like. Now the big problem with this is that if you die, you will be in trouble in terms of... What's it called? Trying to get the head under buffs back. But I think an 80% Delhi is not too bad. Now a lot of people wonder how do you actually keep the Divination Distillate up? So what you do is I have Herald of Purity reserved on my life. You turn off Herald of Purity, right? Because you don't need the damage anymore. And you can see here, you have so much life buffer for the divination, divination distillate to work with. Now, if your life ever regens too high, you turn on Herald of Purity again, you turn it off again, and then you have this life buffer again. So that's just a very nice uh, trick that you can use to make sure that you always have your divination distillate going on. And at this point, I think it's proven that you can do this with a Moon Sorrow. And it's not like the rest of my gear is that crazy because it's literally all magic fun gear, so. Let me kind of ruin the map a little bit just for the sake of the video, but basically Moon Sorrow Wand, this thing is literally doing nothing but giving me rarity. Now the Eyes of the Great Wolf is a lot of damage, so this is the main piece that will probably be very different between my build and yours, is the Eyes of the Great Wolf, but these are literally just rings of resist and some quant. Now if you're really struggling for damage, you can use or drop Sedimas for a rare gloss with conversion on it and it should help you out a lot with the damage if you can't get Ellie Weakness Sedimas. And then this is a pretty affordable thing and this is pretty affordable. Now in terms of these, these clusters are probably like 1x each I remember, 1.5x each when I bought them. This one was 80c when I bought it. And Forbidden Flame and Flesh. Now this jewel, I mainly use it for phasing. I don't think Spell Suppression actually does anything for the build. Like spell suppression is not going to save you a lot of times and I don't think it matters. The Monster of Flames, this is definitely one of the more expensive pieces but you can just get a CB regular jewel instead of using Monster of Flames and you just use a regular Monster of Flames. And then Watcher's Eye, this Watcher's Eye was not actually that expensive. It was just some cold conversion of a Vitality. I think I bought it for 5x or 6x or something. Don't really remember, maybe it was 8x but... We are using Secrets of Suffering, but Secrets of Suffering is actually a lot cheaper now. It's only one Exalt, so it's not too bad. But other than that, you can see, you can get this thing started really easily. And all you really need is the Headhunter Belt. I do know the Headhunter Belt is a little bit more expensive now. It went up to 68 Exalts. But that's just a quick showcase. You can use a wand like Moonstar. Moonstar is literally 0.2 Chaos. But 
yeah, 0.2 chaos. It really just shows you the power of Headhunter. And you can definitely buy a better wand than this for very, very cheap. And yeah, make sure to swap in the gems. It makes a big difference. And don't go for an explode wand because explode does not scale off item rarity. But for the topic of this video, what is the life-changing software and how does it work? So like I said, can you play MF with a bad wand? You can definitely play MF with a bad wand. We tried out the Moonstar on the 80% deli map and the head on a buff actually carries super, super hard. Now you might be wondering how good of a wand should you actually use? Well, it really just depends on your budget. So the best way of searching for wands, and I do think that Fizz is still the best, but some people might say that Ellie is viable. What, we, what you do is you go to Imbued Wall, you type in 350 PDPS, and you pretty much buy the cheapest one possible. Right here, you want to try to look for one with attack speed and crit chance if possible, since you want both. But most of these just have crafted attack speed, and they do get a little bit more expensive. Now, for people who want to know, like, how do you make a 5 600 DPS one? Because 500 DPS is really you want the higher the better right but it does not really matter too much unless you're trying to do 100% delay well there's these cards so you see 500 pdps is 110x this is a huge huge like overpriced because you can just recombine wands with flaring on imbued and i guess the trade site is down but basically there are these div cards called the spoil prince which gives you a dictator's wand base and a merciless wand base and you recombine it with a flaring on imbued wand and then once you have a merciless flaring and dictators flaring then you recombine those two together and pray that you get merciless dictators and flaring and it's like a 30 percent chance to choose all of the mods if you have four mods in the pool so if you really want to make a good wand try the recombining method i do think that it is much more cost efficient although if you don't like crafting and don't like gambling a lot now we just buy it straight up or just settle for a worse wand. Now I wanted to include this section here because a lot of people kind of always ask me and I do think that it wasn't a huge enough point in my last video. And that is how PoeRE, I actually changed my life, right? So PoeRE has, is something new. Some people used to use this for expedition to kind of uh, gamble with bases with Gwenin. So you create the search string for you. So right here on the map modifier section, when you want to roll beyond on a map, so you have this one section here that says, I want these mods. So you want beyond, you click this and it will create this search string here that will make it so that the maps you search for will have this no matter what. And then if you want to exclude anything, like say you can't do Ellie Reflect or Fizz Reflect, then it will add some more lines here that will make it exclude these mods on the map. So it won't highlight it if these mods are actually on the map. So you want to go through all of these mods and make sure and think about which one actually breaks your build. So for most people, they hate aura effect. So this is the one that I always choose. And then buff effect, buffs expire faster. It's really bad for head on her. So I choose that. And then lastly, for me, I don't really like doing minus max because it's just too dangerous. So minus maximum player resistances. So right here, we have the search string that we can use. Now here, we want to type the quant of the map. I generally go for 70 plus quant. You could go for 80 if you want to make a really good map. So what this happens is if you paste this string into your stash tab search. Up to that just yet. So this is all my maps here. So we put the string in. We can see that we have three maps that are above 80 quad. And they don't have any of those mods and they all have beyond. So here, here, here. Now these mods, these maps you can see they're not highlighted because they're not above 80 quad. So it really just depends on how good you want the map to be with your search parameter now if you exclude too many mods like say you have five mods that you don't want then you can't actually put the quant in because the search string is too long and in poe you can only have 50 characters in this section right here it's just a technical limitation so if you exclude too many mods you just have to look at the highlighted map and see if the quant is high enough but regardless this should make it a lot easier to roll your maps now next up we have one of my second favorite software and this is X mouse button control. Now X mouse button control is a software you could use to rebind your left click and right click to a uh, mouse wheel up and down to left clicks. So now you press apply. Now make sure in the scroll options section you have ignore repeated remap vertical scroll. I just put for one milliseconds. I think it used to be higher but maybe they don't kick you now when you do it. But basically how you actually use the software where oh, whoops i just logged out on accident but basically how you use the software is 
you will use your valve scroll wheel to roll your vaps. Now this method only works and holy moly the load screen is very long in PoE. Did my game literally just crash? Nope. But let's see here. So the way you roll your maps is you go to your stash tab and let's have the search string that we were using. And then we go to our Crimson Temple section here. Now you see none of these maps are highlighted actually. So let's go take out some Alex's Scour. So we don't really have that many to show. So let's see if we can actually roll a map here. So what you do is you just scroll wheel up and down through all the maps here. And now this will scour all of your maps. So now you can alcohol, so you bring the alcohols, they're all scoured, and you just look for a map that's highlighted. So now we have one, we have two, and will we have three? No, we we'll only have two. So now this map is beyond, and it's 66 quads, so we don't really want that, and this is 66 quad. Now the reason behind this is because when we did the search here, we didn't specify a quad value, so we set a 70 quad, and we got rid of these, so we, as our build can actually do LE reflect and fit reflect. We have a new search parameter. Let's try one more go at this. So if you don't search, if you don't set the remapping speed, you could get kicked for performing too many actions. So it's important you set that. So this is how you actually can roll like 40, 50 beyond maps relatively fast. And yeah, so here we have it, 72 quads. So let's bring it over to our running section, our maps tab section. So you're able to roll a bunch of beyond maps and it's not too bad. And you don't really need to worry about if the mods are actually going to be right. And they will also save your hand. Like this program has literally prevented me from getting carpal tunnel, from uh, spending so much time trying to roll maps because of the repetitive action. Now you might be wondering if this program is legal. And GGG has said that it's perfectly legal to rebind your mouse wheel up and down as long as you're not using an infinite mouse wheel so that you'll only be doing one action per technically click. So don't worry about getting banned with this software because it's just not possible. Now overall, I do think that rolling maps is a lot easier when you have a lot of maps. So make sure to invest in like a batch of 50. So it'll be a lot easier to roll. Otherwise, you'll have to alk and scour and switch it up every like 10 or 20 maps. It's a lot easier with a full tab of the maps. And make sure you look through all the mods because there are a lot of mods that might break your build that you might not expect. Like buffs expire faster was something I didn't expect. Action speed cannot be modified. It's pretty dangerous because you can't really chill the mobs. And ailment immunity is pretty bad if you're a freeze build or you rely on Herald of Ice. Less cooldown recovery rate is bad for Venom Gyre if you rely on Battle Mage's Cry for damage. So make sure you go through all the mods and your build is capable of doing all the mods. The more mods you can run, the less Alex and Scourge you'll spend uh, rolling the maps. Now MF is very, very affordable as I hope I've demonstrated as long as you can afford the Headhunter. And this is a very, very easy setup to pull off as long as you can buy the Headhunter. Now, I do think Headhunter is probably still undervalued at 68x. It's actually just criminally underrated by a lot of people. And I do think if more and more people try out Headhunter with Magic Find with bad builds or a bad gear level, then they will find that the Headhunter belt can carry pretty hard and almost just as heavily as before. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope that PoE.RE and X mouse button control can help you out in rolling beyond maps or just rolling maps in general. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you find more mirrors, exalts, and mage buds than me. And see you next time. Bye.